it is really cold out today. Let's do something inside. It wasn't this cold in India. After two months of teaching and traveling in India, I jumped on a plane and headed down to Florida to teach a class down there for two weeks. But now I'm back in Washington. It's time to get back in the saddle, put out some new episodes. Big thank you to Helge Pedersen and to Ian and Eric from TourTech for coming out and doing several episodes while I was gone. And thank you to all of you that leave comments, that share videos, that send emails. I love reading what you're thinking. I love reading the questions. So on that note, I'm gonna answer just a few of the questions that have come in that stand out to me. Let's start with this one. Hog Tog Tog, love your videos. Thank you very much, I love doing them. Uh, just to throw in the mix, if you should be separated from your bike, say in an accident, it is it wise to keep your phone on you and not attached to the bike? Uh, may need to call for help, just a thought. That's really good that you're thinking about what happens if what we don't want to happen happens. But the problem is, is your phone may not have cell service if you're actually out adventure riding. You could be in a valley, you could just be way if too far out. So yes, having the phone on you is not a bad idea if you're not using it for navigation. But what I prefer to have is a personal locator beacon. It's called a PLB for short. And it's very similar to the spot devices. So let me show you what that looks like. This is what I carry with me. These are currently around $300. There's no service fee on these whatsoever. You register them with NOAA. They put out five watts of power. Compared to a spot, it's only around 1.6 watts for a spot. And they're at 406 megahertz, which means they go straight to the government-run satellite systems, straight to search and rescue, and they send a helicopter out to get you, provided that you're in an airplane, uh, you're in some place that actually has search and rescue. So it's not gonna work if you're in Nigeria, but it will definitely work in North America. So having the phone to call for help is nice, but when it comes to life and death, I'm gonna have a personal locator beacon. Here's a note. You only get to use this when it's life or death. If you have a flat tire or you're stuck, you have to do everything possible to save yourself or else they're likely to send you the bill and that can be anywhere from $30,000 to $150,000. If you've done everything proper, they're not gonna send you a bill. Okay, next question. Raphael Lago writes, Hi, thank you very much for your channel and you're welcome. I have a question regarding original clutches on the R1200GS. If they are delicate for off-roading, sand, hills, etc., what is your view on this subject? Do you think it's a must to change to ceramic? Thanks. Well, Raphael, as you know, I ride an old 1200 and my clutch is 100% stock original. Uh, Paul, who's also appeared on the channel and teaches with me, his bike also ran the entire length of his old 1200 in, with a stock original uh, clutch. Here's what happens. Riders often lack skill and they don't know what's actually going on in the bike. And there's two things that happen that burn up the clutches on these old bikes. So let me show you how this works out. The clutch on the 1200 looks just like this. This is a replacement. It's a single clutch plate, just like you would see in an automobile or a car or truck. And it's dry. It means that it's out in the open air. There's no oil lubricating it. When these are slipped, when you slip the clutch, it creates friction and they get very hot. When you start to smell it, you know that it's hot and you can always stop and let the bike cool down. What happens is riders will get into deep sand and mud and they'll rev the motor a lot and they'll get things too hot. They'll slip the clutch a lot, they won't give it a break. That's when they burn them up. More common are the multi-plate clutches. So this is uh, what's in your Africa Twins, your KTMs, your Super Ten Race, they're all gonna be a wet clutch with multiple plates. They have more surface area, more clutches, and this whole clutch pack sits in oil. And that oil helps draw all of the heat away and it helps lubricate the plates. But these also can be burned up, just like the dry clutch. So if people get into sand and dirt and they don't have airflow going through the motor and they overheat the oil and they're slipping the clutch, these will also glaze and get smooth and you can burn up these clutches too. The short answer is, if it's not broke, there's no reason to fix it. If you burn up your original clutch, then you might want to consider a ceramic clutch. A lot of you have asked about the neck brace or the neck collar that I wear. Let's talk about neck braces. 
not just the one I wear, but what are neck braces and how do you pick one? So let me grab a few that I have. These all belong in my garage. Here's the one that you commonly see on my jacket. This one's made by Movio. And this one here is designed specifically for adventure riders. This one's one that I use when I go out riding my dirt bike. This one's made by Liette. And this one is one that my wife wears on the street. This one's also made by Liette, but is designed a little different than the street brace. And so the next question is, well, which one do you use and why? Well, I'm gonna give you the answer straight up. If it's not convenient, you're not gonna use it. So whatever neck brace fits you and works for your riding style is the one you need to have. Each one of these has a different advantage or disadvantage. One, they should be very easy to connect while you're, while you're wearing your gear. So you can disconnect them and pull the gear off. I use the Movio because it actually straps to my jacket. It's always connected. I'm too lazy to take it off. Therefore, I'll always end up wearing the neck brace. So every time I put on my jacket, my neck brace is already in place. This one here belongs to my wife. It's made by Liette. It's thinner, it's lighter, and it has more articulated angles so that it's less intrusive when you're wearing it on your suit. The back pieces here that provide support to the brace drop over your collar or the um, clavicles on your back and then it straps underneath. But you have to take this on and off every time. It doesn't open up in the front, it opens up at the side. Definitely less convenient to put on and off, but it is more adjustable to fit different riders. This one's made, again, this is specifically a street based uh, brace so that you have good mobility even if you're leaning forward. This is my dirt bike brace. It's the one I wear when I'm out on my dirt bike. It's lightweight. It's very thin on the sides. It's designed to lock in with my armor on the front and on the back. This one also opens from the side. So from a street perspective, that's a lot less convenient. I have to take it all the way on or all the way off. Uh, from a safety aspect, it's the one I prefer. But when it comes down to riding with safety gear, I know that if it's not convenient, we're far more likely to walk past and leave it behind. And that's when something always happens. So for me, this one is always on my adventure gear. When I go on the dirt, on my dirt bike, I'm always wearing this. And Christina wears this no matter where she's riding. Well, as soon as the snow melts, we'll be back out there shooting more episodes on the bike. This is a crazy busy year for me teaching. If you wanna come up to Washington, I am doing civilian classes for adventure riders in July and August this year. So please come on out and play with me. What do you guys wanna see us do on Motor Trek this year? What topics, what locations, what skills? Let me know what you want and probably just as important as let me know what you don't want to see us do. If you don't want to see comparisons, let us know that. If you don't want to see certain subjects or formats, we want to be the best that you can be. I was thinking of doing an episode on pole dancing on adventure bikes, but I don't think that one will be a big hit. But again, I'm open. Let me know what you're interested in. Let us know. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Love the drums. Hate the drums. Love the drums. Hate the drums. <laughs>